right, welcome to a Proverbs a day, the 19th day of the month. So glad you're here. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying these videos. Make sure and like and share with your friends so that you can encourage them to be in Proverbs every day. A Proverbs a day, uh, you know, so, so important. If you would, take your Bibles, get your Holy King James Bible out and turn to Proverbs chapter 19. We'll read the whole chapter, uh, all 29 verses, and we'll have a little bit of commentary on that after we read through uh, the whole uh, verse verses together. So Proverbs 19, verse 1. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. He that giveth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. Delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. The king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. Slothfulness, ca slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth his way shall die. He that hath pity on the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given he will pay him again. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. A man of great wealth, uh, excuse me, a man of great wrath shall suffer punishment. For if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Hear counsel, and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Smite a scorner, and the simple will be beware. And reprove one that hath understanding, and he will be, and he will understand knowledge. He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. An ungodly witness scorneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devour iniquity. Judgments are prepared for the scorners, and stripes for the back of fools. All right, that is all. 29 verses of Proverbs chapter 19. You know, society uh, is divided in many ways, and we see it now more than ever. I mean, we really do. We see, you know, Republicans versus Democrats. Uh, we see the North versus the South. We see in, in central Illinois here, we see Cardinals versus Cubs. Uh, but in this chapter, uh, verse four, number four, we see it is divided by wealth as well, and it always has been throughout all history. Uh, wealth has been one of those things that, that, that's divided people, the rich uh, versus the poor, uh, you know, the upper class versus the, the lower class. And that God, God, though, is no respecter of persons. He doesn't judge you based on wealth or poverty, on skin color or brain power, but he, he but on, on the choices that you make. You know, God, God uh, holds you accountable for the choices that you make. You know, here, uh, let's read verses one through four again. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also that his soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. You know, people in every generation, in every culture have segregated the rich from the poor. Um, but of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Uh, the Word of God says the rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is 
the maker of them all. You know, God God made all people, and he doesn't see skin color, and he doesn't see uh, the, 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 the uh, prestige of having wealth of this world. Uh, he sees through all that, and people in every generation, every culture have always kind of uh, segregated that way, but uh, it's not a good thing to... Uh, to put people uh, down based on uh, the, the the power of, uh, of of what they've earned um, through through money, but um, the word of God says the rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. God cares about everyone. He doesn't, you know, he, he cares as much for the poor person as he does for the rich person. Um, you know, and uh, God doesn't see skin color. He created humankind. Uh, we're all. Uh, we're all brothers and sisters, and if people get back to the Bible, uh, there would be no racism. You cannot read your Bible and, and, and understand racism. Like one man said, uh, we should need to get back. We need to get back to the who, not the hue, not the not the the pigmentation of the skin, because you know some of us have, some of us have more melanin in our skin than others. Uh, you don't judge someone based upon the skin color. You base someone based. Uh, you base uh, a person. Uh, you judge a person based on their character, uh, not uh, on their color. So anyway, uh, verse number five says, A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Uh, the Holy Bible says in number, Numbers uh, thirty-two twenty-three, But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Uh, you know, I watched a true crime story the other day. A man uh, murdered a woman, a uh, horrible murder, uh, lied to the police, and uh, through his lie, he was dismissed as a suspect in the case. And, uh, you know, 30 years went by, uh, and this man was was uh, basically freed and uh, never, never arrested, really never harassed or anything. And uh, 30 years went by, and, of course, this happened a, a long time ago. Uh, before uh, the evidence was, um, before science has, has caught up to where it is today. And, you know, science has advanced greatly. And because of that, they, they went back to the case. They called it a cold case. They went back and pulled out all the evidence. And when they pulled out all the evidence, uh, there was some DNA evidence. And they ran it through uh, the, the system and uh, to see if they'd get a, get a click on it. And, and through running it through the DNA, it didn't point to anybody that had been arrested before. But through DNA, they could, they could trace it down because of all these genealogy websites and everything. Uh, they traced it down to the family. And by tracing it down to the family, it brought up this suspect. Uh, he wasn't a suspect, but he, well, he kind of was, yeah, but he'd lied and got out of it. But it brought this guy's name back up, and because of that, they were able to really pinpoint that he was the guy that did it. And through that, they eventually were able to go and look him up. But unfortunately, 30 years later, he'd passed away, uh, you know, and um, he'd already died. Uh, they exhumed his body, they dug him up, ran the DNA, and it was confirmed he was the murderer. Uh, you know, after all that, and you say, well, you know, he got away with it. He he lived his whole life, lived and died, was never caught, uh, was never prosecuted, was never punished, and uh, you know, and if the delirious atheists are correct, then yes, he got away with it, and uh, good for him. You know, he did what pleased him, and uh, you know, he did what he wanted to do, and according to Darwinian evolution, uh, at its finest, it's survival of the fittest. Uh, he was more fit and he was able to carry out his will on a less fit per person. But evolution and atheism are just a wicked fairy tale for adults who hate God and don't want to think about final justice. You know, the Bible talks about the justice of this world, uh, but not everything is tried in this world. There will be a final justice. And, you know, this man who, who did this horrific thing lived and died uh, without ever being caught, without ever being prosecuted, without ever being punished. And some would say he got away with it, but only the people who don't understand that there is a true God and there is a final judgment would say such a foolish thing. Uh, you know, um, the moment he died, he found himself at the place of final judgment, and he was wishing that the fairy tale of atheism and evolution were true. Unfortunately, he found out the hard way that those things are fairy tales for wicked people who want to uh, run from God. And uh, as the Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, you know, he will be cast in the lake of fire and brimstone and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever uh, because he rejected God, he rejected wisdom, and he lived his life to please himself 
and he did wrong, and he was never caught in this life, but he found out there is a future eternity where man will face the final judgment. And, uh, you know, um, it's, uh, it's true. Uh, a false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. You know, you might escape in this life for a time, and you might have escaped some judgment in this life, but uh, you won't escape the final judgment. And that's a scary thing uh, if you're unsaved and you don't know God and you have not repented of your sins and made things right with those that you've wronged, uh, you will face the final judgment. That's a very frightening thing. But, uh, you know, God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't care if you're rich. He won't buy your way out of trouble. He doesn't care if you're poor. You won't be, you won't be, he won't be sympathetic to get you out of trouble. You will face the final judgment. Let's go on to verses 6 through 11. It says, Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him, how much more do his friends go far from him. He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. He that giveth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. Delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. You know, what gives God more glory? To punish sin or to forgive sin? Uh, wisdom shows you it is his glory to pass over a transgression. You know, no matter what you've done, uh, God is willing to pass over your transgression because it will bring him more glory. And in doing that, uh, you know, a person who really repents uh, and comes to Jesus Christ, you know, some people say, well, you know, God wouldn't be fair if he allowed someone like Hitler to pray a prayer and go to heaven. Well, I want to tell you something. Praying a prayer doesn't save you. Knowing God and having a relationship with God is what saves you. And the reason it saves you is because like Nicodemus came to him by night and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, don't you know, you're a master of Israel. You should know this. You must, you must be born again. Listen, you can't enter heaven the way that you are. You're dirty, you're filthy. Uh, he would have said to Hitler, listen, you can't enter heaven the way you are. You're dirty, you're filthy. You must be born again. In other words, you must be a different person. Uh, that old person that you are cannot enter heaven. Uh, Hitler could never enter heaven. Uh, he would have to come to Jesus, be clean by the blood of Jesus Christ, and become a new person to enter heaven. You know, that's the glorious thing about uh, God can save any sinner. It doesn't matter how wicked or how vile you've been. The guy who murdered that woman, uh, who got away with 30 years, if he had repented and come to Christ, God would have said, listen, you have to go turn yourself into the authorities and you, you, will, you will face death in this life. You will face judgment in this life. But in the life to come, if you're really born again, you will make things right in this life and you've made things right with me and because you have been become born again, you will have eternal life in heaven and you'll be free for all eternity. You have to make, you have to pay the penalty in this life. But in the life to come, if you become a new person, you're no longer that same person. And God can allow you into heaven through the blood of Jesus. What a wonderful thing. You know, that's what, I don't understand anybody that wouldn't come to God and be saved. Uh, God gives, you know, what, you know, what gives God uh, more glory? To punish sin or to forgive sin? Uh, to allow brokenness to continue to be broken or to fix the brokenness in people? And God says, you know what? I choose to fix the broken and to make them right. And what a wonderful thing that is. Wisdom shows you it is his glory to pass over a transgression. You know, in light of this, Jesus said, uh, Be therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and it shall be forgiven. And he, forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Given, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You know, God's saying the same thing. You know, you want glory in your life. Uh, you'll have more glory by passing over a transgression than for uh, for, for tr tr wanting to condemn someone and, 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 uh, and, and harm that person. So uh, God wants to forgive people. He can't forgive the people who don't repent. It does take repentance uh, to have forgiveness. But uh, if you come to Jesus sincerely, he'll forgive you. And not only forgive you, he'll make you a new person. You'll be someone who's totally different and who is uh, purified in God's eyes and able to enter a holy heaven. Uh, Psalm, I mean, Proverbs 19.12 The king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion. 
uh, man, that's scary. You know, I, I've heard a lion roar in a zoo, and that was behind bars from a long distance away, and it was still a frightening thing. I couldn't imagine being in his path and, and being in a danger uh, of being devoured by a lion. But the king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. You know, as you can see, uh, I'm going to put a tree chart up here for you to look at. Uh, it's Proverbs 19, and I just made a tree chart of this. And it said, as you can see in this tree chart of Proverbs 19 that I put together here, uh, the king's wrath abides on the foolish. Uh, you know, I put that as the trunk of the, the tree. Uh, the king's wrath abides on the foolish. And the king's favor is the strength of the wise. Um, you know, so um, God, God, uh, God wants... Uh, the king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion, but his favor as the is the as the dew upon the grass. You know which one you want to be. You want to be wise and have uh, the king's favor, or do you want to be foolish and have the king's wrath? Uh, I think I'll I'll, I'll choose uh, the king's favor every time. Uh, Proverbs chapter nineteen verse thirteen says, "A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping." You know, a foolish son and a contentious wife are a huge problem. Uh, to any home that they would dwell in. Uh, don't be a contentious wife or a contentious spouse who's always peck, 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 peck. You know, um, you ever have a faucet that just drips at night and you're trying to sleep and you can't sleep because it's just drip, drip, and it's just continually dripping? Uh, the Bible says a contentious wife, or you could, you know, you could put a, a husband in there as well. You know, a contentious spouse, uh, someone who's just a constant drip. Uh, what what a what a problem that is, and a foolish son, of course, is a huge problem to a home. So, um, Proverbs chapter nineteen, verse fourteen: a House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. You know, a wise father will store up good things to leave uh, for his children. Um, God, our heavenly Father, is better than we are. Um, you know, not even close. You know, we, we, in comparison to God, we are evil. And uh, Jesus said, If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give... Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Uh, or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give, give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You know, uh, here on the chart, uh, you know, hopefully I'll have it back up here for you again. Uh, God, God has a goodly inheritance uh, for His children. Uh, that's one reason to be a Christian. You know, I mean, there, there's a, there's a billion reasons to be a Christian, uh, and there's no good reason to be lost. But one of the reasons is God has a godly inheritance for His children. Uh, if you're saved, your father is the. Dad. I mean, if you're if you're not saved, if you're saved, your father's God, and He's got a goodly inheritance for you. But if you're not saved, your father is the devil. And his inheritance for his children is the pleasures of sin for a season. All he can offer you is counterfeit, uh, counterfeit things, counterfeit pleasure, uh, you know, counterfeit love, uh, counterfeit, um, you name it. God, I mean, he's got a counterfeit for everything God has that's good. The devil has a counterfeit. You know, he'll replace uh, lust, you know, in, in place of love. You know, you want lust or do you want love? I, I, I prefer love. You know. I, uh, you, you, we've probably all experienced lust and love. There's a huge difference. I'll take love every time. Uh, you know, so the inheritance of God is good and it's everlasting. The inheritance of the devil is the pleasure of sin for a season. Um, Proverbs 19, verse 15. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hungry. Uh, you know when you lay down to go to sleep, a deep, deep sleep. You ever been in a deep sleep? Um, it's easy to continue that sleep. Uh, you know, it's actually very hard to wake up from a deep sleep. And, uh, you know, I've had my alarm clock go off when I'm just in a deep sleep. And, you know, it's time for work and the alarm clock's going, you know, that annoying, annoying. There's nothing, there's no sound more annoying than an alarm clock going off when you're in a deep sleep. And I reach over and hit the snooze button and uh, go back to sleep. Um, and uh, it goes off 15 minutes later, boom, it goes off again. I'll reach over and hit the snooze button again. I'll do that four, five, six times. Why? Because when you're in a deep sleep, it's easy to continue in that state. The Bible says, Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. You know, a deep sleep uh, is hard to come out of. Uh, so is laziness. Um, we've all had seasons of laziness in our life. Uh, 
and, and and trying to wake up from that deep sleep of laziness, it's hard to break out of slothfulness, and the Bible says so. So the best thing is don't get into slothfulness. You know, we all have to sleep. We have to go to bed at night and sleep, but we don't have to be lazy. Uh, we can we can we can not be lazy and uh, and and uh, learn to work hard and not fall into that sleep of laziness. Uh, verses 16 and 17, He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth his ways shall die. He that hath pity on the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given, he will he pay him again. Jesus said, Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. In other words, you can't outgive God. Uh, not just talking about money, but man, you cannot outgive God. Give God. You should you should give uh, to the poor. Uh, you should give to missionaries. You should give to your local church, uh, and you should give uh, when you see somebody in need. Uh, the Bible says you can't out give God. You give you give what you have, and you're actually if you're doing it for not for a pat on the back. Uh, if, if that's what you're doing it for, that's all you get is a pat on the back from from your neighbors and, and people who see you do it. But if you're doing it for God and you don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing, uh, you're laying up treasure in heaven uh, that is way more valuable uh, than the goods of this earth. Let's read verses 18 through the end of the, the, the chapter. We'll have some final comments. Again, I just kind of hit some, some things in, in Proverbs, and there's a lot more that you could add to what I'm saying. Um, but Proverbs 18, 19, verses 18 through 29. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and lot, let not thy soul spare for his crying. A man of great wealth, excuse me, a man of great wrath suffereth punishment. For if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Uh, hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy lighter end. There are many devices in a man's heart, nevertheless the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, he will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Smite a scorner, and he smite a scorner, and the simple will beware. And reprove one that hath understanding, he will understand knowledge. He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. An ungodly witness scorneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devoureth. Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the fool's back. You know, the Bible just talks about the difference, and it just continues to compare uh, the, the, the wise and the foolish, uh, the scorner and those who would listen to God. And, you know, an, an ungodly witness is, is, a, is a very dangerous thing. And, and the, you know, the Bible says the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. You know, they just, they just eat on, uh, on wickedness. And there are so many people who just uh, love to, uh, to uh, devour iniquity. They love to eat sin. And they just feed on it day and night. Uh, you know, don't don't fall into um, into uh, wanting to do wrong. Um, you know, don't be lazy. The Bible here cautions very strongly about being lazy. Don't fall into that slumber of laziness. Um, keep yourself busy. Uh, that old saying, "Idle hands are the devil's workshop," it could not be truer today than it's ever been. You know, with everybody out, with uh, you know, uh, not going to going out, not spending time in. You know, there there are so many churches shut down. Uh, there's so many uh, stores shut down. Uh, there's so much not going on that it's so easy for idle hands uh, to become the devil's workshop. And there's so many things going on uh, behind the scenes that are not good because people have time, uh, because people are being lazy. And uh, as you see people becoming more and more lazy, you'll see sin abound more and more. So fight the urge to be lazy this week. Uh, jump in and say, hey, I'm going to do this Proverbs a, a day, and I'm going to share it with my friends, and maybe I'll make my own video or whatever you want to do to promote people uh, to watch a Proverbs a day. I, I want to thank you again for being with us uh, today on the 19th in Proverbs chapter 19. I hope you're determined to read a Proverbs a day. You know, if an apple a day keeps you healthy, uh, you know, think about a Proverbs a day keeps you wise. Uh, you know, it's good to eat an apple a day for your health and eat a Proverbs a day uh, by reading it uh, to keep you wise. So don't forget to like and share this video. And uh, Lord willing, I will see you in Proverbs chapter 20 tomorrow. Uh, God bless.